What are the scariest new food items at Costco right now? When I say scary, I don't mean like, ooh, Halloween scary. I mean, what kind of ingredients are being combined? What kind of weird things are there? I've already found a few things when I was scoping out the store, so I'm gonna share them with you. Let's go ahead and find what you may want to be avoiding at Costco right now. There's plenty that you wanna have, but let's just point out those few things that you should steer clear from. Item number one. Look at our friend Chester the Cheetah is back, but this time he's got some mac and cheese. He's not just making Cheetos and chips anymore. He's getting into uh, everything else. So at first I was like, okay, let me give this a little bit of like a chance. So I took a look at it. I'm like, maybe it's just regular mac and cheese. I mean, and it kind of is, but then you get into it and you know, you go the traditional, yeah, wheat flour, you know, typical thing that we over consume. Uh, whey cheddar cheese, that's really not that terrible. But then the first like fat that's in there outside of any like actual cheese is really <laughs> uh, canola oil. And then we get into maltodextrin. That's not the end of the world either, but natural and artificial flavors, whey protein concentrate. Then we have corn syrup solids. Hmm, okay, definitely not a win there. Modified cornstarch, lactic acid, citric acid, and then we have wonderful monosodium glutamate. And what's funny is people give me flack all the time because I'm not the biggest fan of monosodium glutamate. But if you look at the research, it does spike interleukins. It can cause an inflammatory reaction. And the thing is, is that when you actually look at what MSG does, that's what gets the most frustrating. MSG makes things hyper palatable. It makes us overeat. Isn't that a problem? I mean, if calories in and calories out really is the holy grail of things, then isn't making something hyper palatable that we consume more of not exactly a good thing? So I hate when I see MSG in this because let's see, I mean, I don't know for sure, but like if we look at, you know, Kraft mac and cheese, which is definitely nothing to write home about, um, this doesn't even have MSG. I mean, it has sodium phosphate, which is not a good preservative, but I don't even see, at least this is even using some durum wheat and a little bit, I mean, it's not saying it's better, but at least it's enriched macaroni. At least they're enriching it with some iron and stuff like that. This is just, anyway, it's scary. It looks scary. And has anyone else noted that Chester the cheetah has become kind of creepy? He used to be cute. Now he's creepy in all those commercials. Anyhow, let's find the next one. Oh, and after this video, today's sponsor is a really cool low carb bar that is in the refrigerated section. Okay, it is called the Good Lovin' Bar. And the reason that it's in the refrigerated section needs to be refrigerated is because it does not have any preservatives. It does not have garbage in it. So it is like a food bar. I mean, what they have in it is unbelievable. They make it with coconut butter. They make it with cocoa mass. They make it with wholesome ingredients that if they weren't in the refrigerator, yeah, it would, you know, wouldn't last as long. But that's what I look for in a bar. So I put a link down below for you to try the Good Lovin' Bar. They have a strawberry cheesecake flavor. They have all kinds of like mint chocolate chip flavors. And it's keto friendly, but it's not just for keto. Like my kids eat them, my wife eats them. They are amazing, amazing, amazing. And at first I found them when I was doing an Aldi grocery haul. They were on the shelf at Aldi and I lost my mind over the ingredients, like how perfect they were. They then reached out and said, well, you love our bar so much. Can you shout us out in some other videos? So here we are. So there's a link down below. And if you use the code organic 20, you can save 20% off your order with the good Lovin' bar. You have to try them. They will get cold shipped to you. Then you put them in the fridge, keep them in the fridge. They'll still stay good out side of the fridge for a little while. It's just the point is you want refrigerated bars in that kind of context. Anyhow, that link is down below. You know what's actually kind of cool about Costco is these products are few and far between. Like I'm not just saying that to stay in the good graces of Costco. I mean, really, like most of the stuff now, like all this, like it's not all that bad. I mean, there's some things that I wouldn't recommend eating every day, but you do just, you have to keep a lookout for the scary things. And that's what I'm here for. So you can just navigate around them. All right, something that is a little bit scary at Costco that you need to be careful of is gonna be like the canned chilies. Now this isn't the worst one, but the reason that I'm pointing this out is because there are some things in it that you really wanna avoid. Okay, we have pinto beans, resistant starch, not bad at all. Meat ingredients, beef and pork. Okay, yeah, not the end of the world, pretty good actually. But then we start getting into this other stuff where we have modified cornstarch, we have salt, that's fine. Defatted soy flour, so you're getting really concentrated soy flour. Dried onion spices, soy protein concentrate. So what they're doing is they're adding fillers in there and soy is very, very, very inexpensive. This isn't like an alarmingly, shockingly terrible food, but what I would recommend is even though this is a vegan chili, this one is much cleaner. Like if you take a look at what's here, we have water, three bean blend. Um, oh, in this case, ooh, you know what? Wow, eat my words. This is kind of scary. This is a perfect example of what you have to look for. It almost got me because I looked at, I, 
almost got tight. <laughs> it's crazy. This one has some like defatted soy flour or things like that. But here's what I want to show you. This is wild. Okay, water, three bean blend. All good, right? Okay, but it's plant-based chorizo. It's plant-based. It's got to be good, right? Okay, but then we get into what's in that. Water, textured soy protein, soybean oil. Okay, so the chorizo that they're using in there I wish they just used regular chorizo and I'm not anti-vegan by any stretch of imagination. I get tired of the garbage that's in a lot of vegan food, but soybean oil. Okay. So what you want to look for when you're looking at soy, soy is a lot better if you're getting it in like soy flour or you're getting soy starch, stuff like that. Once you get into the soy oil, that's when you're really dealing with something that's not good and really cheap. Okay. So I have to eat my own words. I would get that before I would get that, but neither of them are like alarmingly terrible foods. It's just a perfect opportunity for me to point out how I almost got bamboozled. Okay. Here's one that I've talked about before. So deceptive. It's so crazy. Okay, so it's these Milton's Cauliflower Crest pizzas. I think that this is pretty deceptive, right? Because it's not really a cauliflower crust. It has cauliflower in it. Okay, we have cauliflower and then we get into rice flour. So it's really like, look at the carbohydrate content, 27 grams of carbs, five grams of sugar. It's not exactly what we're after. Now, the ingredients aren't necessarily terrible. The ingredients are actually halfway decent. We have some modified food starch in there. We have some tapioca starch. That's really not a huge deal. We've got cultured brown rice. It's just not that bad in the way of ingredients, but this one makes kind of the alarming list in terms of like deceptive marketing, right? I don't like it when they do that. Like it's really more of a gluten-free crust. It's not necessarily just a cauliflower crust. Cauliflower crust to me, that implies that you're making the crust out of cauliflower and not having a copious amount of carbs in there. Uh, clearly these sell well because they've been at Costco for a very long time, but it's just something to be very wary of. Whether you're keto or not, That maybe that's a better option than just going for like a standard deep dish pizza, but still something to be aware of. All right, here's something. This is what's funny is like sweet potato fries. I'm actually a fan of them if you just make them normal, right? If you just cut up some sweet potatoes and you pop them in the air fryer, I, boom, done, right? Put a little bit of avocado oil on them, put them in there. Okay, but one of the big things that we have to look out for is like when you buy frozen sweet potato fries, you're not buying just straight up diced or sliced sweet potatoes. You're buying stuff that already has the oil and everything on it. So check out this. Here's where we get into an issue. Sweet potatoes and then the next one is going to be organic vegetable oil. It's organic, but they can't even ascertain between sunflower, soy, and canola. Okay, so we have all kinds of just different garbage in there, but look at how much fat is in there. Okay, we have 15 pieces of six grams of fat. So that means that's a fairly decent amount of this that is actually coming from soybean oil. So this wouldn't be something that I would say, oh, just go to town. It's going to be better than having regular French fries. The fact that yes, you have a lower glycemic carbohydrate from the sweet potatoes, that's much better. And the fact that sweet potatoes are what's called a resistant starch, which avoids some forms of digestion and they actually feed the microbiome. We definitely have a benefit there. And yes, they're organic, but I just wanted to kind of sound the alarm on this a little bit because you always have to be looking for that soybean oil. And some of the other stuff that's in there, okay, like we have sodium aspa, uh, excuse me, acid pyrophosphate, sodium bicarbonate. Uh, those are, that one's okay, but we do want to avoid that sodium acid pyrophosphate. Okay, it's still sodium phosphate. It's just slightly different in how it's processed. So sodium phosphate will drive up some of your phosphate serum levels. That can just throw things off. It can also draw a lot of water in different places. It's just not exactly what you want to be having a bunch of. You're better off, once again, buying sweet potatoes or going to the produce section, finding sweet potato slices and putting them in the air fryer or something like that. Okay, you know what's funny is just like when you watch a nature documentary, they say, stay away from the frogs with the bright colors. Stay away from the snakes with the bright colors. Ah, stay away from otters with bright colors. Now, when things are like bright and flashy, it's usually what you want to avoid. Here's what I want to show you about this. We're pumping our kids full of these things these days, right? Like I'm not, but I mean, it's common. That's why they're here. Okay, look what we got in them. We got first ingredient, water. All right, not the end of the world. Apple juice, yeah, not that bad. Okay, then we got sugar. Then what are we pumping our kids full of? Sodium benzoate, okay? Sodium benzoate and potassium sorbate are two of the worst possible preservatives that you could consume. Okay, I have done videos specifically dedicated to sodium benzoate. Okay, sodium benzoate is one of these that not only affects the microbiome, but it can also affect our leptin levels. Okay, and we also have all other kinds of issues that come along with the combination of potassium and those uh, sodium, uh, excuse me, that come along with that potassium sorbate and the sodium benzoates. So the potassium sorbate is most notorious for affecting our leptin levels in terms of like the communication between our fat cells and our brain. That's not just bad for weight loss. That's bad just in terms of cellular signal 
signaling. So sodium benzoate, no way. So if you're going to get like a, a fruit juice pop or anything like that, you're better off finding one that's already in the freezer that doesn't have to have a preservative in it. So definitely the bright colors. Eh. Here's a perfect example of another thing that is plant-based, but is, I'm sounding the alarm on, okay? You're, look at this. Okay, we have the English muffin, which you know is not great, right? Did you know Pop-Tarts are vegan? Like a lot of foods that you can get, you know, you could go to McDonald's and get French fries and they're vegan, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that things are okay. Okay, we have thiamine mononitrate. Uh, That's not the end of the world, but where we, things start to get really, really weird, okay? We expect stuff in an English muffin to not be that great. But when we get to the alpha sausageless patty, we have water, soy protein concentrate, and soybean oil combined with wheat gluten to hold it together, seasoning yeast extract, which is basically an MSG alternative, inactive yeast, natural flavoring, and spices, modified cellulose, yeast extract again, malt extract, psyllium husk, okay, at least we have a little bit of that, some fiber. Then we have the vegan eggless patty, water, mung, ooh, that's kind of interesting, mung bean protein isolate, canola oil, cornstarch. Okay, so the fake egg is a little bit better. That's not the end of the world there. Um, at least they're using some turmeric colors. So there's some things that aren't like the worst. At least the cheese is water, coconut oil, food starch. Eh. I mean, that stuff I could handle, but I hate when I see like they're making a sausage patty out of a bunch of soybean oil and a bunch of like basically MSG and stuff like that. So just be wary of that, right? Like at that rate, like go, I don't know, find another protein source outside of just soy. It's not the best. Anyway, I digress. All right, you're probably not running out and buying Cliff Bars anymore. Like that was like so 1997, but it's still worth mentioning because they scare me a little bit, all right? So look what they go in here. We got organic brown rice syrup. So basically the first ingredient is like a rice syrup that's basically a, a sugar. Like, I mean, it's it, this is more of a candy bar than some candy bars. Uh, second ingredient is organic rolled oats. Then we get into organic cane syrup. Then we get into peanut butter. All right, cool. But you're combining a bunch of fats with a bunch of carbs, which is not exactly something I want to do anyway because of what's called metabolic gridlock. But then we get into the protein sources. Oh, we have roasted soybeans. So soy protein isolate. Nice, okay. Uh, and then we get organic soy flour. We have some natural flavoring in there. That stuff's not the end of the world. And then we get into the chocolate chips. We're, we're, oh, there's a different flavor. Uh, sorry, the chocolate chip flavor, which is essentially putting us in the same thing. So they're using soybeans as their protein, okay? Not even a hint of even whey protein concentrate, which is arguably just as cheap as soy protein. So I just, my just spidey senses go off when I see like soy overused. And this may just seem like a massive soy bashing video. You'd be surprised that I actually talk about utilizing edamame sometimes, because edamame is a specific kind of bean that you can actually basically inhibit specific enzymes and not digest carbohydrates along with it. So I'm not totally anti-soy, but this stuff isn't even, at least it's organic soybeans, I'll give them that. So they're not using the you know crazy weird GMO stuff, but just be cautious of that. All right, let's take a look at Gogurt because I see the bright colors. I want to see what's going on here. Okay, bright colors. We got kosher low-fat milk, sugar, modified cornstarch, uh, kosher gelatin, at least it's kosher gelatin, uh, tricalcium phosphate, natural flavors, potassium sorbate. There we go again, microbiome, right? Um, okay, I mean, there's no need to have that. That's what's interesting. In a refrigerated item, there's no need to be having potassium sorbate, sodium benzoate, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, even sodium phosphate, it's just not necessary. Like sodium phosphate can be used to kind of retain uh, like texture. There's no sodium phosphate in this, but just to kind of give you a concept there. So a lot of times you, you will see that in shelf stable items that are trying to keep on a shelf. Like there's just no reason here. I mean, at least there's no high fructose stuff, but basically, I mean, it's basically sugar packets. So, anyway, that's kind of an obvious one. Let's keep going. Oh, okay. These always crack me up, right? I think veggie straws, they're veggie. They're good, right? There's nothing veggie about them, <laughs> like, at all. Like, it's corn flour. That's a corn chip. That's a potato chip. That's, and then we have potato flour, literally like a potato chip. Organic potato starch, literally like a french fry. Organic cornstarch, organic rice flour. The only thing going for this is it's organic, except for the salt. <laughs> And then look at this, it's not even, so they call them veggie straws, but then what's funny is they're using turmeric coloring. They're using beetroot powder to make them red, tomato powder to make them other red, pink, whatever, organic turmeric to make them orange, spinach powder to make them green. This is one of the most deceptive items that is out there on the market in general. Like everything about it 
is just fake. It's just you're you're leading someone to believe that they're having a veggie straw, that they're having like a dried or veggie, but it's a fake veggie. It's nothing. It's a potato chip. And then you like compare that to like a brand like Hip Peace. Like this is kind of interesting because at least this is actually using what they say they're using. Chickpea flour and at least they're using sunflower oil instead of you know, uh, soy oil. There is some canola oil down there at the bottom. They're using rosemary extract as a preservative, which is it's not for flavor, that's a preservative. It has preservative powers, which is really cool. Uh, anyway, the point is, is like these two are right next to each other and right in front of my eyes, people are grabbing this one and they're not even touching this one. These taste better and they're not phony baloney. Anyway, moving on. Okay, here's a weird one, <laughs> Bavarian meats. Okay, usually they had the Duke sticks for a while. They've kind of like tossed around different meat sticks. This is a new one. I do appreciate this one's gluten free, but there's a couple things in there that are sketchy, right? Like I want you to look out for stuff like this, like sodium erythorbate. You're going to see in a lot of bacon, not exactly something you typically want, but the bigger piece is we all know about sodium nitrites and stuff by now, right? Sodium nitrites are not good when it comes down to being a preservative. Like there are studies in terms of them being uh, inflammatory. There's studies in terms of them affecting the microbiome. And I just look out for things like that. Now, the positive with this is the carb content is phenomenal, but this is a like zero carbs. But this is a perfect example of how something can fit a specific lifestyle. For example, this can be keto friendly, but that does not mean that it's healthy, right? It does not mean that it's good for you. And unfortunately, you know, especially given that I'm in the keto world a lot, I see this happen a lot where people just focus on the macronutrients in the big picture, or they'll focus only on calories in and calories out, and they will forget about how things affect them, right? Like even when you get down to how pharmaceuticals are formed and created, they're creating them from foods and plants and things like that. So yes, there's obviously powerful components of different foods that you eat and negative and positive. So to oversimplify and overgeneralize and say that it's only a, you know, calorie equation or a macro equation is just very short-sighted, right? Because there's effects that things have on you. If you were to just take a bunch of you know, medication all the time, it's gonna have an effect, right? And it's gonna outweigh however you eat. So anyhow, just be careful. All right, so I wanted to take a look at this because it's kind of interesting. So this is called the That's It, only two ingredients, no added sugar. It's kind of cool. Yeah, these are, these are actually legit, like literally just apples and strawberries. So, I mean, this is where you have to kind of look at things. If you have kids, it's not a big deal to give them fruit. It's not a big deal to give them fruit snacks, but let's compare like That's It, or I thought this one, I've seen this one before. This one's kind of cool. Basically a fruit roll-up bar. That's apples, pears, strawberries, and black carrot extract. Like super simple ingredients, right? But compare that to let's say Black Forest organic gummy bears, right? And these almost look like they would be better for you. But then when we actually look at the ingredients, look at what we find. Organic tapioca syrup, organic cane sugar, gelatin, lemon juice, uh, tapioca starch. It's a starch smorgasbord, that's all it is. Okay, we got, then we got, it's just, it's nothing to it. Natural flavors, organic sunflower oil, carnauba wax. I mean, wa wax is always good for kids. You should always encourage them to eat crayons. You yeah. know, of course, right? Anyhow, okay, this is a scary food. I don't think that if you're watching this channel, you're running out and grabbing some Hello Pandas, but I mean, they do have some cute little cool pandas in there, but this is funny. Like, look what we got. Wheat flour, niacin, uh, reduced iron, thiamine mononitrate. Then we get into sugar. Then we get into vegetable oil, palm, palm kernel oil. Uh, okay, more soybean oil, chocolate. Then it gets into some interesting stuff. Emulsifiers like sorbitan, uh, triesterate, sucrose esters of fatty acids. So they've taken fat, fatty acids, broken them down, and taken sucrose esters of them, uh, added soy less than. Then they have ammonium bicarbonate, which isn't a huge deal. Baking soda, malt syrup, uh, hydrolyzed soy protein, maltodextrin, Greek yogurt powder disodium guanolate, disodium inositate, and yeast extract. This is a, like a definition of a Franken food. This has got like a little bit of everything in there. Um, when, if you compare that once again, I don't have anything right next to me, but there's ways to get like a chocolate thing without that. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Especially when, like, I get really concerned with emulsifiers because one of the things that we have to really be careful of is our gut layer. What happens is we have, you know, a layer within our gut, okay? It's the lining of our gut. And this lining of our gut has these things called enterocytes, these little cells, okay? And the epithelial cells that are in our gut. And what happens is when you have emulsifiers, you can emulsify and kind of break down the gut lining. And when you break down the gut lining, it compromises the integrity of the gut, making it so things can pass through into the bloodstream a little bit easier, potentially triggering an inflammation effect, right? Now, 
a lot of the science is kind of you know done in rodents and everything like that but when you start looking at that it's because it's hard to do human studies on that stuff it's not ethical so when you look at how that works the mechanism is a little bit scary with a lot of emulsifiers so usually like when i look for emulsifiers like you want to see ones that are just like a lot more natural and not totally chemical anyhow let's move on okay out of all the things this is probably one of the sketchiest most sugar bomb things you can consume straight up mango nectar right look at this okay an eight fluid ounce serving has 34 grams of carbohydrates okay organic mango puree but then they also as if mango puree isn't sweet enough they need to add some corn or some organic cane sugar and then they also need to add organic mango puree so we have organic mango puree concentrate let's add some sugar and then let's put some more mango puree that's not concentrate and then let's add some natural flavors to it and then we'll like preserve it with some citric acid so i have a quicker way to get across that okay take a half a cup of sugar mix it with a little bit of citric acid and put it straight in the toilet and the last thing that i've got to end on heavyweight spoons i mean because heavyweight forks aren't good enough see you tomorrow